channel. If you are new here and don't know who I am, my name is Montana. I am 24 years old and I am an Australian cowgirl who is moving to America very soon. So I've started this channel because I have had a lot of interest in my journey and next stage of everything I'm doing and I really wanted to be able to show everyone, tell everyone how I did it, how you can do it, or if you just want to watch along on my journey. So a little bit of background about me, my a large part of my family are all horse riders, horse breakers, massive history with wet in the Western horse industry. So my mum, she lived in America when she was about 18 for a few years. She did a lot of cutting. Um, she's done a lot of Western showing. She's tried just about everything. I have ridden horses my whole life since I was very, very little um, and competed rodeoing and Western showing and even some hunter showing and stuff like that. Um, I've gotten older, I've started to train my own barrel horses. I have also worked in childcare a little bit. I have worked with race horses. So very heavily involved in horses, the Western industry. Um, it's always kind of been a dream of mine to go to the States. I went over when I was 16 as a part of the high school rodeo team with my sister and a whole heap of other really cool Aussies. So that was really fun. We got to represent Australia in Wyoming at the high school finals, which it was amazing. It was very eye opening. That was my first trip to the States and it definitely helped to kind of ignite the fire of, wow, this is amazing. I want to come back. Uh, but I really didn't do that much about it. It seems like a very unrealistic goal to be able to go over there, especially when I was 16. Um, it just seemed very hard, very far away, very scary. So when the world got shut down by COVID, it seemed, well, it was literally impossible to travel overseas. But that's when I kind of got it in my head that I think that's what I want to do when and if the world ever opens up. Um, we, me and my sister lived together and we lived in the most locked down city in the world so that was really awful <laughs> but it gave us a lot of time to sit at home and think about what we wanted to do and work on our goals when we couldn't leave the house at all so that was a very very tough time but also a lot of growth in that time between me and my sister which is amazing um i would not be the person i am today if it wasn't for covid and not that i would ever want to relive that but it would just, I would be living a very different life. So during COVID, um, we, I got to watch a few Aussies over in the States that have done really amazing things. And that kind of cemented that, hey, it is possible. We can go over and do it. And um, it, it is doable to even take your own horses over. So I have a pretty cool little horse. His name's Bobby. He is an eight year old quarter horse. I had won quite a lot of maturities and um, start, just started to win sort of open bow racing checks and stuff like that. And I just really thought that he would be worth taking over. He's at kind of the top, some of the top of the game over here in Australia. And I had always looked at horses that he was competing alongside, even beating and thought they should be in the States they could do really well. So, so when he got to the same level as these horses I'd always admired and thought should would do amazing things in in the States, I realized I think I have a horse that I could take over. So that's probably going to be a whole nother video of how I got him over there, that whole process. This video, I want to make a little bit more about the visa side of it. So I just want to go into depth, in depth to price, timelines, how I got it done and how to help people do it if they want to try and get a sports visa. So about a year ago, I started inquiring into lawyers, finding the right law firms that would help me get my sports visa you do have to use a lawyer to get your sports visa so i found the lawyers that i used by october they were sherrod sports lawyers um, they are over in the states they really specialize in sports visas um, they have done rodeo people bow races stuff like that before so i was pretty happy and pretty confident that they would be able to get the job done so i first started with them in october um the initial lawyers fees with them was four thousand american dollars so that's to get your petition done um from when i first inquired you kind of have to start gathering documents 
Um, I only spoke with them over email because we were over in different countries to each other and that was kind of the easiest way to do it, but they were really great. I, I just spent the next few months getting together my earnings, winnings, um, major wins, even the smaller wins. Um, you just really have to get as much information together as possible, um, titles, pretty much everything you've won, everything you've contributed to the sport, um, how you've achieved your wins, if you can get letters and references from all your sporting clubs of kind of your achievements, um, personal and like business references from from people. So um, I, I'm, I have been a horse breaker here in Australia, so I got some letters from clients on, um, you know, clients that we've broken in their horses, started them. I really just got, spent that next, that time getting as much information together as possible so that you have a really strong case. So I got all these letters together and my petition was ready to be filed by January. It definitely could have been a lot quicker, but I was a little bit slow in asking people for, for letters and references um, and just gathering it all together. So for the petition to be filed, you also need a sponsor. So a sponsor is someone in America that says, yes, we wanna, we'll take you on, um, kind of backs you pretty much. So at the time I didn't have many contacts. Um, so I opted to use my lawyers offer a service where they are the sponsor. So that was an extra a thousand American dollars. If you have contacts um, and all that sort of stuff, you can definitely use them as your sponsor. It doesn't, it's no kind of obligations or, or payments or anything like that for them if they wanna be your sponsor. And that will definitely save you some money, but I just am very impatient and had no contacts at the time. So I opted to use the my lawyers as my sponsor. So that was an extra a thousand American dollars. There is either premium processing or regular processing. Again, because I am so impatient, I paid extra for premium processing. Now, regular processing is between two and five months. They will get back to you with an answer as to if your petition has been approved. Premium processing is 15 days. So at the time I really wanted to go then and there, and that's definitely my personality. So I paid, I think for the premium processing, it was about 2,900. Dollars American, whereas for regular processing, it's about I think four or five hundred dollars. So again, a lot of money you could save there if you're not as impatient as me. But I wanted to get it done. Um, I just really wanted to know and be able to plan what I was going to be able to do. So I wanted that answer back within 15 days, or else five months is kind of a really long time to wait. I had started to put everything in motion, ready to come over, well to go over. So I really wanted that answer back pretty quick. Now, once the petition is filed the first time, you will get your answer either within five months, two to five months, or 15 days. Um, I got an answer within the 15 days and my first petition was actually sent back. They needed some more evidence. The embassy, I guess, or the government required more evidence. Um, my lawyers did say that this has been pretty common lately because of COVID. There's a massive backlog and they're kind of just wanting to push it back, give us some more evidence, and then we'll look at it again when we're when we have time. So I got some more evidence together, um, just more wins, more letters from sporting clubs. Um, so we have a few associations over here. ABHA, um, I, I really got into how it's live streamed, how it's really important. I had a, I had a pretty good leg to stand on with um, my high school rodeo achievements. So if you have competed internationally as a part of a team in your rodeo, process in rodeo um, or in your sport that really really helps you so representing your country and have and going overseas that's a really big achievement so that really helped me I got a lot more evidence behind that um, we sent the petition back off so again I was pretty slow with that because I just hate sitting down doing paperwork type stuff I hate bragging on myself I got some more evidence together sent that petition back off and that was approved. So in the end, my petition came back approved on about the 20th of May. Um, once that petition is approved, you then need to go to a embassy appointment to finalize your visa and, and make sure that the whole 
embassy officials, consulate actually does approve of your visa and they kind of do little background checks on you. Another COVID backlog is trying to find embassy appointments. Um, you can book your embassy appointment yourself. You just need a few things from your lawyers, but with the time it takes, again, I just decided to throw some more money at my lawyer, pay another 500 American dollars for them to book my appointment for me. Um, when we first inquired into appointments, there's only three places in Australia that do it. So it's Perth, Melbourne and Sydney. Um, Melbourne did not have any appointments until March 2023. So my visa wouldn't be approved until then. Uh, Sydney wasn't until October 2022 and Perth was not until 2023 as well. So um, that was a little bit tough, but I manifested an appointment. So when I got my first petition back on about the 20th of May, I then had to fly home from the States on the 26th or the 27th of May um, because I just went over and holidayed on an Esther for three months. So my Esther had run out, so I needed to come home. When my petition was approved. Um, that was about the 20th of May. My lawyers somehow, because I needed it, found an appointment where someone must have cancelled or something in Sydney on the 11th of July this year, which was only going to be a month and a half after I got home. Um, so they booked that appointment for me. I have no idea. I probably wouldn't have found that if I opted to book the appointment myself, but they found that appointment for me, booked it for the 11th of July in Sydney. Once you have your appointment booked for the 11th of July, you have a whole heap of paperwork that lawyers will send you that you need to take in. Um, you also need to take in your passport and make sure you have a recent passport photo. So I'm from Melbourne, so I had to fly up for a night to Sydney to make sure I was there for the embassy appointment. So this was my experience with the embassy. Um, I got there early because I was not missing this appointment. Um, the security was very strict. I had to turn my phone off. They took my phone, my handbag. All I could really take in was my paperwork, my passport. Uh, the appointment all up went for probably 45 minutes. You Once you go through security, you go up to a uh, top level of the embassy where they do visas and passports. Um, the people were really, really nice. Security were nice. The guys working behind the desk were really nice. They just ask you, I guess, a few questions about when you've been over there in the past, if you've had any visas. Really quite just basic questions they sort of ask if you've had any visas before and then the, I guess the consult appointment, the, they just ask you um, if you've got any prior convictions in any countries with, or if you've ever been in trouble with the police. Um, they also just wanna know kind of what you're doing, where you're going. It honestly probably was about 10 minutes all up where I was asked questions um, just about my travels and all this sort of stuff. It really wasn't hard at all. You also have to pay one more fee while you're there um, once your visa is approved. So you really could go this whole process and then get to that appointment and they not approve your visa for whatever reason. I assume more so for if you've got any convictions and stuff like that, but I didn't. <laughs> so once you get your visa approved, you just have to pay another about $150 fee there at the embassy just to have your visa approved. Um, they tell you then and there that your visa's been approved. They take your passport and some of the paperwork and they then send your passport back to you. So I got my passport back within a week. So my appointment was on Monday and I had the passport back by the following Monday. It has my visa stamped in it and yeah, I'm ready to go. So my biggest tips would be if you're trying to get a sports visa, um, get a really good lawyers. It is kind of hard conversing between two countries. So you really need a law firm that's big enough that they can, um, they're really easy to communicate with. My lawyers specialize in sports. Um, they do a lot of boxes, just a lot of very different sports. So they are pretty onto it. If you are thinking about getting your visa, just start compiling your achievements. Um, literally anything you can get. If you run sixth, eighth place at a bar race 
write that down. Um, I started compiling documents, just Word documents, um, with lists of all my achievements a few months before I started applying for my visa because I didn't get told that was kind of the best way to go and that definitely helped if you've got stuff ready to send to your lawyers as soon as you pop kind of pick yourself a lawyer that really helps um get as many references and stuff from sporting clubs sporting people people that are really high up in the industry um people with a lot of achievements and accolades if they can write you reference letters that really really helps if you have ever been a part of a team whether it's even just inside australia but if you've been a part of a national team that really helps as well get as much evidence behind that and how you went how you performed overseas as well even if you are overseas they really encourage and if you're just over there on a holiday they encourage if you can kind of enter any bar races and win some money even if it's just while you're on holidays um that really helps for when you need to build up a profile if you've already done well competing over there so all up my total cost for my visa was about twelve thousand dollars you can definitely do it cheaper there's things that I spent the extra money on because that's where I want to put my money and I'd rather it all get done properly, my appointments get booked, uh, everything be professional and finalized because that is not an area I'm great at. My initial lawyer's fees, I guess, were 4,000 American. Um, you don't need to pay the $1,000 for a sponsor, the $500 to book the appointment or the nearly $3,000 to get premium processing if you don't want to. So can definitely save there. I definitely recommend my lawyers. They were Sherrod Sports Lawyers. I will tag them in this video. I tagged them a few times on Instagram. They were really helpful. They did literally everything for me because I'm not that way inclined. Um, and they were very patient. I, I also could have had the process done probably a lot quicker if I got my body into gear and knew what I was gonna be in for. Um, but that's just me. I don't like to sit down and do paperwork. Um, yeah, they're my main things. Also, don't be scared or intimidated of the embassy appointment. It's not scary at all. It's, it was really, it was a, actually a very pleasant process. The security were nice, everybody there was nice. Oh, I also had to pay an extra $37 to get my passport delivered back to me. So very small cost in the scheme of things, but uh, you either, if you can't pick your passport up from the embassy once it's finished, you just pay, yeah, like $37 to have it sent to the post office and then you pick it up from there and you're good to go. So I guess the process took me from October last year to July this year to get the visa fully done and finalized. I'd say you could knock off a few months there if you got your butt into gear and were a little bit better organized than me. My visa is for three years. You can get it for five years, but my lawyers recommended just starting with the three year one first. I do think that there is an option to extend mine to five years, but or else you can, in, you can always apply for a five year one first straight up in general. Yeah, so that's my visa story. This is just how I did it. That was who I used, how long it took. Um, I hope that helps if anyone's wanting to get a visa done. Definitely take some of the tips that I gave you because it can make it a hell of a lot easier on you. If you start getting all your stuff ready before you even find yourself a lawyer, it will certainly help. That's kind of today's video. If you would like to hear more from me, let me know in the comments. I will be trying to post more vlog style videos, Q and A's, um, and just really fun content that us Aussies really want to see with what's happening in America. <laughs> if you want to keep up to date with all my videos, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like, and I will try and keep posting quality content.